Hello YouTube, it's Das Gregor, and welcome to Gen 2 in Review for this week. You will notice right away that I'm not sitting in my armchair, and I'm not in my home. In fact, if I move to the right or so, you can see the painting back there, or the picture. My work has sent me out to Salt Lake City in Utah, United States, and... I did not want to miss giving you guys a video for uh, Gen 2 in Review or doing a first impressions. So I brought my laptop with me and without further ado, because the network here is a little slow, I will be getting rid of the uh, video portion of uh, the camera anyway. And we'll go ahead and discuss this week's Gen 2 in Review. Okay, as I mentioned, the network here is kind of slow, so I want to try to keep my video to as small a size as possible. And I have found, when I don't have video of my mug on the screen, that I can get a pretty decent size, less than 100 meg video file from one of my ramblings. What I'm going to be discussing today is the whole point of what do you do when you want to take your Gen 2 laptop with you and you go to a hotel and they've got wireless access and you're all set up of course for your um, home network. Now if you use Wicked, W-I-C-D, uh, as some say it, or you use um, Network Manager, you really don't have to worry about this. This is something that easily gets handled by that. However, I do most of my stuff command line and since I don't start up my GUI right away but I need network connectivity and WICD I believe in both network manager require for the GUI to start before they actually run and connect to your network uh, I have to use my init scripts to set up my network so what I found after doing some googling was after listening and looking at a few different people ramble about how hard it was for them to figure it out, I found very simply within the wireless networking chapter of the Gen 2 handbook as we see up here, that it gave me my answer and some great examples. So think of this as kind of a preliminary to my Gen 2 install that I will get to within the next month or so. I just need to get some stuff taken care of for work and actually have some free time to think about how to go about doing that but this is chapter 4 or portion 4 of the Gen 2 handbook and I will be discussing, we'll start at the beginning when I actually start doing some Gen 2 tutorials because I think it's more important that you understand how Gen 2 puts together its handbook because most of it's just reading it and understanding the choices that it's giving you uh, besides just installing it and that part really if you understand command line interface and you're not afraid to, for certain commands it's not that difficult for an installation but inside here it does talk about for instance about the desktop environment and most clients such as wicked which I heard someone say one time that they thought it was pronounced wicked I've always called it WICD and network manager you know they pretty much just do it right away but if you use WPA supplicant like I use or even wireless tools with the IWconfig, you need to do a little bit more to set things up. And right in here with WPA Supplicant, which if you're using it that way, you already probably have WPA Supplicant installed, especially if you're using any type of encryption and you need Gen 2 to work. Now, some of this stuff here, I've never worried about putting modules in this. It automatically pulls it in for me, uh, the way my kernel's built and the the system set up. Never had to worry about, well, I think I have this somewhere, but it, of course it's for WLAN 0, not ETH 0. But this is what's important right here. These are great command line examples that you would use in your WPA supplicant dot configuration. Now normally when you're setting up for command line interface for your net script to work, all you would have to do is something like sudo wpa underscore passphrase oops I hit the uh, caps there pass I thought let me 
double check them. Okay, I didn't need the pseudo there. Or maybe because I was putting it there. I'm tired. It's been a long day. I just want to make sure I get these videos out to you and that I don't mess up. But normally the command would be WA passphrase my ESSID or whatever your ESID is, and then whatever your password, my secret password, whatever. You know, something like that. And it would create, uh, oh, and then, and then you want to pipe that, of course, to slash etc wpa wpa underscore supplicant dot configuration and then you'd hit enter and it would create everything and create a secured little spot there for you and then it should work but in this case what we want to do is set it up so that we can utilize the hotel wireless to do that we need to look to figure out what the hotel is using in this case it's using an open authentication and the way they authenticate is they have you open up your internet your ugh, yeah your internet I've been working too hard whatever you're using chromium firefox etc and then when you open that up and you go to a page for the first time it then comes up with a login screen they've given you credentials so that you can log in but the important thing is that you need to configure it so that you can log in right away so knowing that I was able to find these examples of such things as WPA PSK where it's PSK is an ASCII passphrase allow all ciphers there's some other areas in here where it's broadcasting and looking for things um, any valid cipher combination is accepted. Here's an example. Um, plain text connection, no WPA, no IEEE 802.11x, whatever. And that's what we need to look at. So I just had to copy in here this little bit and edit my WPA supplicant file. So over here, we need to do a sudo nano w slash etc. WPA supplicant, WPA supplicant. Now, I'm not going to go in my configuration file. I'm going to use my example file that I created because it's just what I'm going to use. Because when I tried to do this before and I did all this stuff and put in some garbly goop for my personal network at the home because I want to keep that secret, and then it was failing on me when trying to actually start it. So I'm going to leave my configuration proper with the way it is. Pretend, of course, these were my proper things for my PSK, my SSID, etc. I just added the network option down here. The SSID, this is the, of course, the ESID for the hotel that I'm at. That's all I'm going to give about that. And then, of course, the key management equals none. Did all that. I saved it. And then, of course, after I saved it, then all we have to do is a sudo slash edc init d. Now, if you haven't started your network, you can go ahead and do the net.wlan0 and type in start, which I haven't started this one yet. Oh, um, I already have started it. So, we'll, if you have already started it, you can do a restart. And I always use the dash d command, which ignores certain protocols so that it just goes ahead and looks through everything it brings it back down it brings it back up and if we want to do a verification to make sure that things are looking good we can do an if config and we should see now that I've gotten an IP address from the hotel and that it's set up and if we were to open up a new browser window and say we want to go to distro watch Since I'm starting this up, I'm not sure if it's going to make me log in again. Yeah, it's going to make me log in again. So I'm going to pause the video real quick because I'm sure they don't want me broadcasting this kind of information everywhere. And there we are. As soon as I log in, it brings me up into their website for there. Now we can go to Distro Watch. And voila! We're now on the network. We have an IP address. Everything is working for Hotel. You know, whenever you, the, the, the main point of this, and, and this might not apply to a lot of you Gen 2 users out there, 
but if you do use WPA supplicant or IWconfig to set up your network from command line interface and like I said I do that because I don't always like to go into a GUI right away I always start it up and, and go right into command line interface and do what I need to do and then think about whether or not I want to go into GUI now there is always ways to make Gen 2 automatically go into a GUI I know at one time people used to complain that they didn't like it booting into uh, command line interface they want to go straight there and there are ways to do that with XDM and its scripts so that it goes right in there but you have to make sure you install a desktop manager to start for all that sort of thing and like I said a lot of people probably if you use wicked or network manager don't have to worry about this but I thought it was important to go ahead and do it and in the theme of the fact that I'm at a hotel out in a way I thought I'd make this a hotel themed uh, Gen 2 in review uh, talk discussion etc I apologize that I seem a little out of it it's been a long hard day I got a lot of work to do while I'm up here in a few days to do it I had an 11 hour drive to get up here from Arizona yesterday it's been two very long days actually so but you guys are my fans I appreciate all your talks you know your everything that you guys are out there doing I appreciate the comments uh, all the subscribing you know hopefully I'm putting out information that's useful to you guys or at least you enjoy looking at it uh, as I said the handbook here is always a great place to go to to find information they, like I said, they also have very good examples on how to use WEP WPA keys and how to use the WPA to, to, to set that up manually with examples all around here very good place to go to if you're ever confused about tr how you're going to connect to a certain you know, like I was saying you have everything hardwired for your home but what do you do when you go abroad and you go to a friend's house and they have a different setup you got to know how to be able to configure it quickly and easily especially if you're doing it from command line interface you, you have a simple setup of course if you're using the GUIs but what's the fun in using a GUI if you're going to be using Gen 2 <laughs> nah Sometimes I like the GUIs better because it's just a lot easier than trying to figure it out at command line too. Yeah. But that's always uh, an adventure there. This week, I'll just uh, go ahead and tell you, I'll be looking and reviewing Sparky Linux. And so I've got that installed right now in my guest OS partition and we'll be talking about that more. Uh, it may come out a little early on Friday because I plan on driving back Friday back home to Arizona and I want to hit the road by 8 or 9 in the morning and I probably won't get home until 7 8 o'clock at night. I guess I could, you know, I've, I've posted things later than that before, but we'll see. We'll see. It, it depends on the size of that video because if the video is too big, I'm going to wait till I get home Friday night and just have to upload it then because like I said the network here is pretty slow and already this file for instance is 134 megabytes so I don't want it to get much bigger it might take you know two or three hours with the way the network is here to go ahead and update so as I always leave you if it's morning noon evening night I screwed that up but whatever you're having enjoy it <laughs> I appreciate the views, I appreciate your comments, I appreciate all that you guys do. I'm just pretty, pretty uh, appreciative. <laughs> Hope this helps maybe somebody out there. Uh, thank you for watching my videos. We'll chat with you later. Hope you enjoy Sparky Linux this weekend. Bye.